NBA shoes, and then we can go right into the Jordan 11s. Do you want me to pull up the video of them trying on the shoes? Yeah, sure, if you want. Okay. So I've got that one. Not a bad idea. That's a good idea. Everybody ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the SUP Podcast, number 145. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. How is everybody? I got a, I got my two co-hosts with me, as usual. We got Lawrence Deloach to my left. What's up? Hey, and we got Chris Cheney to my right. What up? What's going on? I'm home. Out yeah. of the element, but I'm here and I'm excited. You're home where? Where's home, Chris? Boston, baby. Well, and over past, like 20 minutes outside. Shut up. 20 minutes said, outside the city. Just say Boston so people give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. How is everybody's Christmas? Christmas was good, man. I mean, you know, I'm usually small with the Christmas shit. It's just usually me, my sister, and my mom. But it was good. Nice to be home, you know, all the same. What about you guys? It's really good. It was a good time. I got to open up my present. So my my Atlas shoes came in on Christmas Eve. Oh, awesome. I opened up my, my girlfriend's pair that she gave me on Christmas Day. <laughs> I put them right next to each other. And I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> what the fuck am I gonna do? <laughs> now wait, Luke. Here, let me ask you a question. Did you pick the best two? Did you pick the best left and the best right and fuse them? Oh no, <laughs> I didn't do that. I should have done that. Because you you can take the you can take the two best ones <laughs> and put those <laughs> together. Then you can have the backup pair that's like the worst versions of the shoe. No, I'm really thinking about just keeping them as a, like a backup pair because I'm trying to. I was trying to sell them all of like Christmas. Uh, day after Christmas, so 26th, I was just trying to, Boxing Day, I was trying to go around, trying to sell them on like Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and then I went to round two, and round two gave me a terrible deal on them. Uh, yeah, it was not good. Damn. They, were, they were like, oh, we'll give you like 260 for them, and I was like, suck my dick. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> Lawrence, how was yours? Yeah, Lawrence, how many socks did you get? Uh, 72. Because I was... <laughs> Very bad this year. So. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no, no. It was it was very low key. I, my my favorite part of uh, Christmas is uh, NBA games. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just like the dopest shit, man. Like the basketball. There was football on. You know, it was, it was, I love it, man. Did you, you see know? Anthony Davis flaunting our L's in our face on Christmas yeah. Day? Yeah, man, that shit hurt, man. That shit fucking hurt. For those who don't know what we're talking about, Anthony Davis was wearing a pair of the Boom, the Kobe 6 Pro Tros, the Grinches, just letting everybody know he got them. Luke's grail. We don't got them. I was so sad, man. I think think it's interesting, man, with the Grinches because I think everyone was so, so happy, you know, that one of the greatest colorways of the Kobe line, one of the most iconic colorways was being uh, retroed or in a pro tro form. And then it's the same old bullshit, especially with, you know, since, you know, the legend Kobe Bryant passed away, you know, people have been wanting, you know, his, you know, his sneaker models and people haven't been able to get them, man. It, it, this one was so bad that Vanessa Bryant, you know, uh, God bless her, everything she's going through. She like had to put out a statement on some, like, we're going to like, we're working to get more Kobe's basically. You know, it's not, it's, it's tough, man. That sucks. You know? Yeah. yeah it was really sad. I, I don't know. Everybody's like everybody in the discord for those who aren't in the discord link in the bio, join that shit. It's a lot of fun, but everybody was speculating that they're going to do like a pop-up shop in LA for these, uh, for these Kobe Grinches, which, you know, not ideal. Cause we're not on the West coast at all, but maybe and it's some- after Christmas now. Yeah, mm-hmm. but also what I'm thinking about is I know it's like it'll be frustrating, but if if it is true that they're going to do a second release, we might see resale go down uh, because I think as far as like in comparison to like the originals, obviously this the four hundred dollar re- like resale price, it's kind of doable. You know, that's a that's a one pair of Atlas shoes, a trade away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's what you do with your second pair. I should. Yeah. Uh, a couple of other interesting pairs. Anybody else see any any pairs uh, 
on the uh, on oh the, yeah, someone um someone wore uh some Iversons like the Abominable Snowman version. I forget who it was, but I Montrez was like, Harrell, Montrez yeah, Harrell. I was like, yeah. yo, he was really trying to make a statement there. He was like, yeah, I could compete with Grinches with these Iversons. <laughs> yeah, Grinches I, look crazy. It's always, I mean, Christmas Day basketball sneakers. You know, Nike is always. Um, they, you know, obviously with, with the with the pandemic and but in years past, I can just remember so many Christmas Day sneakers that you would be like, God, I need those. Whether it was Kevin Durant's, LeBron's, you know, it was all Kobe's, obviously. But it just it just feels Kyrie's even to a certain extent. But it just feels like it, it, there's it wasn't you know anything this year that made you look like go like, oh, I need these Christmas Day sneakers other than the Kobe's. Yeah. You know, you know what I didn't see on anybody's feet, which I know Chris has been pining for for the past like three weeks, is the Jordan Eleven adapts. Nobody's playing in those, man. No one wants those. <laughs> I think I'm the only one that wanted them until I saw the five hundred dollar price tag, and I was like, "Yo, why did you go up?" Did you see the video of of the guy trying them on? No, show me, dude. I would this, love to see that. Hold on, this is probably. I don't know if you guys get audio on this side, but you can literally here can you hear it no i don't think we get audio but oh shit so he tries them on and basically you just hear a a big ass whirring sound like just a (laughs) loud as fuck like you just you know the sirens i thought i was gonna see someone playing those just because they're everyone's playing everything i mean if you're playing in, in abominable snowman iversons then i would think that jordan adapts would you know, enter the into the court side at least, but no. And I, they even said a statement saying that this shit doesn't even really work and it dies out quick. Wow. Well, like I said before, and I think I've told you this, I, I trying on adapts, uh, and these are designed for performance for you know for on the basketball court. And I and I remember trying on the the adapt hyper adapts or whatever the adapt the two point not a fun sneaker it's heavy it's bulky it's loud and it's not something that so i just feel like jordan is just once again just gentry humphrey just doing what he does and fucking things up it is cool to see the technology hit a uh silhouette that we're all sort of familiar with and we can connect with Mm -hmm. so it is on the right path of like becoming a sneaker that more people can actually purchase i don't know that 500 hundred dollar price tag because it was we had the mags, right? right. That, that didn't auto lace, then auto lace, then the BVs, then the hyper adapts, and it got down to four hundred from the crazy price. But now they went back up. Yeah, but well, then I, a lot I, of the time it's like the resale too is like it. You can get them for the low on the resale at this point where they're like they're all kind of hovering around like three eighty four hundred. Right. I mean, these. I don't know how many. Uh, I don't know what the quantities are in these. I mean, I would think that they would limit these ones a little bit, try to make the value a little bit higher. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to pay attention to this release, though, just because, you know, I always care about the new technologies and the progression of where the Tutanik Jolly goes as far as the silhouettes. Um, I want them. I think it's a hard flex, but, I I mean, they don't really work. They said it. The girl who, like, helped work on it was like, yeah, these don't last. But, I mean, it'd be a nice flex for, like, a month, (laughs) you know? Well, I think I think what they need to do, and I, and obviously I know this is going to be is easier said than done, is they need to figure out how to make this technology a little bit more affordable for for people. Yeah. And and, and I, until then, I think it's a novelty. It's going to always be a novelty. And we said this in the past. You know, before then, I think it was like six seven hundred dollars for a pair of uh for a pair of the, the Earl uh Nikes, mm-hmm. and now we're getting these. You know, five hundred dollar Jordan uh, Eleven. And we've seen in the in the past three hundred and fifty four hundred dollars. I think until we get to that point where this can be two hundred and fifty dollars, it it's going to continuously to me be a flop. The technology, it, unfortunately, the technology, yes, it is. It, it's expensive, so it does come with the premium, but it's just it's a novelty, and and I I can't I can't get behind that right now. You know what? I had a weird thought that I think that those were supposed to be the holiday 11s, but that they didn't trust in the price tag and the technology. So they went with the Jubilees. That is a crazy theory. I don't think I don't think that that would be because I I, I feel like Jordan, number one, Jordan would never mass produce a, a, a auto lacing sneaker. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think maybe the original thought was like, oh, OK, well, you know, 
make these the holiday 11 because that will get people to be interested in not only the Christmas 11, but that technology. Nah. I don't think maybe they, I don't think they could have. I don't think they got it right in time. No, I don't. I don't think that at all. I think Jordan Eleven is the Jordan Eleven, and then this hyper adapt is the. And Jordan Brand's done that in the past, where they have their Holiday Eleven that they super mass produce, and then they have like a special Eleven. You know, I've seen. I remember in the past it was like the Pantone Elevens, where they'll mm-hmm. throw collectors and and people a limited type of Jordan Eleven after, but there's no way they're mass producing over uh, half a million. You know, Elevens. I mean, uh, yeah. hyper adapt 11s hyper 11s or whatever you want to call those garbage pieces of shit mm-hmm. yeah i feel i'm just not i think it's just it's a money grab and it sucks and it's not it, it's just trash these are not <laughs> family friendly i'll tell you that much <laughs> because you can't you can't like if you're going to an asian household you're taking off your shoes right so immediately True. you gotta go <laughs> to take off your shoes. <laughs> you're sneaking out in the middle of the night everybody yeah they're wait. not the they're not the sneak out shoes for sure. not, this is not the, the shoe for going to sneak over to your asian baby girl's house you know what i'm saying <laughs> not that shoe you're gonna get caught you're gonna get right you're gonna get attacked by the father that's what's gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> but you see yeah i you were mentioning that you wanted to keep a close eye on these what i want to keep a yeah, close eye on is uh the jerry lorenzo deal yeah that's Have another we- one. This is huge, actually. Lawrence, your boy, your second favorite designer. Yeah, I, I'm actually. Uh, this was this was not surprising, but it was also surprising um, because obviously uh, Jerry Lorenzo. He comes from. He's a Kanye disciple. He helped Kanye with you know a lot of his designs, and we all just had that feeling like Nike is gonna. They saw that they lost Kanye. And they were going to do everything to keep his boys happy, whether it was Don C, Jerry, you know, Travis, all these, you know, guys that were under Kanye. And I think it just is another example of Nike saying, listen, we we don't need you. Yeah. And what- yeah, I was actually I, I mean, I was really caught off guard. I wasn't expecting this result. I mean, like like you said, it is sort of like uh, you could, you know, when, when you lay out the pieces, you can kind of see why this happens. Um mm-hmm. Luke, you had, had actually a, an interesting theory off mic that you told me about. So my theory was that like Nike was kind of pricing out Jerry to begin with, like his shoes did not really get the chance to shine for the most part because of their higher price tag. And I'm wondering if it's because. Uh, but I remember being in like the Nike stores uh, when juice juice was like when juice was working at, at Nike, we were all kind of bullshitting around, and one of his one of his coworkers had the uh, had the the the, Air, the Fear of God ones, and he was talking about how like if I didn't if I was wasn't able to get these for retail, I probably wouldn't get these because like first of all, resale's a little crazy, but then also like it was it was difficult for him to even pull the trigger because the shoes were like what were they like three four hundred dollars to begin with, which is like I think what? there was three three something yeah you're like yeah, three fifty right three fifty. Yeah, so yeah. that's already like a pretty high price tag on on any any like uh, Nike product to begin with, and then even like the air the raids that he did and the moccasins were a little bit higher in retail value than anything else. And I like it might be a material thing, but it also might be like Nike was kind of setting up Jerry. Like it could look perceived as Nike was kind of setting up Jerry to like fail to begin with, because like the silhouettes, you know, people were kind of like eh about most of them. And then, you know, you have this high price tag and it is like it really doesn't promote like anything uh, like, you know, any chance. Well, the the ones I get being expensive, but it's the other models that he didn't necessarily change that much being a higher price, which you pointed out to me. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it's like the the moccasins were, I think, like 120 or 130 to begin with. And the, the, the raids were like 200 to 250, somewhere around there. And I know that's like, you know, a regular pair of air raids were like 150. So it's just like it's, you know, price There's like something to do with the pricing, I think, was like almost uh, gave gave uh, other shoes. And plus, like the shoes that were coming out, I believe, were coming out at the same time as some other very hyped models. So, like, I think like the timing of everything, plus like the pricing, it was just kind of like Nike was like, all right, well, look, your shoes didn't sell as well as somebody else. So we don't really need you that badly. But they didn't give a fair shot. 
I think losing Jerry is going to it's going to hurt. But at this, I mean, I just feel like Nike has this like we can continue to push whoever we want and they're going to do fine. Now, I, I'm not too sure because I feel like Jerry, Kanye, uh, Don C stuff has been, is like kind of stale a little bit. And, and Don C isn't as, as big as he was maybe five years ago. Correct. Um, you know, obviously they still have the number one collab guy right now. They can just give Travis any model and, you know, it'll it'll create a, a generate a, a buzz. But Jerry was kind of like following the Kanye blueprint in terms of like my own shoe in a sense, <clears throat> like designing his own shit. Uh, I wonder, like, you know, obviously he's going to have to use the Adidas kitchen, you know, the innovative kitchen to see what they have. And obviously it's a lot of boost type of stuff where with Nike he was able to kind of, you know, use, uh, in my opinion, you know, stuff that I, technology, I like a little bit more, but I'm sure he's like, he's going to fuck. He's like headed and supposed to head the basketball division and shit for Adidas. So yeah. it's going to be huge for him. And then Kanye is going to probably do, you know, he's going to do his own thing. Jerry's going to do his own thing. They still, they have Beyonce, like they have a, a, a high powered, roster mm -hmm. the roster is getting strong enough where i think that with a couple more solid people i would be worried if i was nike i mean like you said lawrence you could do anything you want as nike you keep moving forward like i don't think that train's really going to stop mm -hmm. but if you get a strong enough team around you the team can do a lot of the lifting for the three stripes you know what i mean like mm -hmm. some people are going to go to buy jerry lorenzo's adidas because they like jerry lorenzo you know what mm -hmm. i mean the same way mm -hmm. that like you know i follow fragment you follow um John Elliott, um, mm -hmm. Luke follows Asian baby girls and just buys what they wear. Yes. You know, it's, uh, you know, I think that if that roster gets big enough, then I think Adidas will be able to snatch some, you know, clout from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a move that I think a lot of people are going to like, maybe go like, Oh, cool. But like in the industry, I think a lot of people are going like, Oh shit. Like that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, he got a tattoo whenever someone makes a deal and then they get a tattoo based off the deal, you know, it's something crazy is going to happen means they got a lot of money for that deal yeah i mean like, <laughs> like how much how much power do you think they're gonna let him have if he's like yeah i'll get a tattoo of this shit <laughs> i don't know probably a lot probably a lot We've, we're also seeing it with nba players i know we like we already went over the, like basketball stuff but we saw uh jamal murray uh signed a new balance as well so we're seeing like a little bit of an exodus from nike and i'm saying like you know in speculation terms, it's like, you know, people are offering something. There's something going on behind the scenes contract wise where either they're getting more money or they're getting uh, or they're getting their own exclusive sneaker deal. But there's getting some sort of better deal from these other companies. And they're kind of uh, these these other companies are getting kind of, uh, uh, I guess, a, a foot over Nike in some capacity. Wow. The puns. Well, I th <laughs> Okay, I think I'm just, I'm, I'll, I'll see myself out. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I think a lot of times you would see a lot of um, a lot of people would just stay brand loyal to like Nike and stuff like that. But it, it like th there's so much money being thrown at these guys now to to switch over. And, you know, Nike can't roster everyone. Mm -hmm. So when you have Puma and New Balance and Adidas, man, like and they throwing money at you fuck it. Like I can create my own little legacy, you know? And, and I think that's what the athletes are doing. And it just shows that in terms of, um, in terms of endorsement deals and, 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 and rosters, I don't think Nike has like, you know, they don't have full control over it anymore. I think it's, you know, the gap is being close. Damn. I fucking, you pun that shit out. The gap, Kanye, fuck it. Let's 2021. <laughs> All like right, so myself. Lawrence is gone. I'm gone. So it's it's just Chris's show now. Yeah, you do a solo well, podcast. You shall see how hard it is. Fucking fake Bill Burr. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know solo. what's weird to think about? <laughs> yeah, just the, the sub podcast, Monday morning podcast. The, yeah. Um, no, it is crazy to think. So, you know, you, you brought it up. I mean, based on the whole discussion that we have here, but Luke, you said it. He got his own shoe at Nike already. Right. So, and that's usually the sell when you go over, like, all right, we'll give you the shoe that Nike wouldn't let you have, but Jerry mm -hmm. already had it. So, I don't know what kind of extra power. I think maybe that basketball title may have been, may have been it, or I don't know what he's going to be able to do, but he's going to be able to like do some crazy shit with that title and coming off from Nike, already having the shit that he did over there. 
I think we also might, he's we might he's see the our same. first collab. We might see our first easy collab. Maybe that's true. I was gonna say you might uh Title wise, there, yeah, he has to pull the grad Kanye and put him on the basketball court because they don't like quantums on the court, even though it's technically a basketball shoe. But also, the other thing to think about is he's the same level as Jay Z is at Puma. Explain. So, Jay Z is the head of basketball at Puma. Right. So, Jerry Lorenzo is the head of basketball. Oh, gotcha. Okay. You know, they have comparable they have comparable titles between two different companies. Yes. But it seems like I don't I don't want to say that Jay Z was like the the first like celebrity sort of like uh position holder but now that puma has one and adidas has one i feel like to get like to hop on the clout train i feel like a bunch of these companies are going to try to do that maybe not nike but like giving some celebrities positions to help sell i mean like reebok tried to do that with swiss beats and like you know that whole thing back in the day i don't know if like that was uh, where this is bouncing from but it seems like that's a trend that's going on now based off these two events Hmm. It's true. I don't, I don't know, man. I feel like oh, side note, I feel like K-Swiss really missed a missed an opportunity with Swiss Beats. I just I, I just remembered that those two things were existing at the same time. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was just a random random thought. The, the the only the Venn diagram of those two overlapping is just S W I. That's it. There's nothing else. <laughs> and then they do the K Swizz, bro. <laughs> Guy, get out of here. I told Listen. you I was leaving already. So, Listen, guys, it's been a fucking rough year. And and this n- neither one of your bancers is helping this year. But <laughs> we've had some uh, we've had some wonderful sneakers uh, drop this year. Yeah. And I'm I really a lot of them I, I missed out on. Uh <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of uh, I've been seeing a lot of celebrities give their their top sneakers of the year, and us at the Sub Podcast we want to give our top sneakers and sneaker of the year. And uh, let's just kind of let's let's talk because it's been an interesting year with COVID and you know people stores haven't you know really been open, uh, but we still right. did a lot of online releases that you know made things a little blurry. This has been the year of the the SB dunk uh and also the year of a two thousand dollar air jordan one uh luke what are what are some of your top sneakers and then we'll kind of talk about the sneaker of the year afterwards uh some of my favorite sneakers of this year i mean of course you got the chunky donkey that was like you know that was like the big the big sb of the year but you know the strange loves were the were the first ones i think those are those are for like those are my grail. I see those and I'm like, oh shit, these are these are the ones. We've got, you know, the Grinches that came out. Even the Fire Red Fours, I did really appreciate the 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 re-release of those. Um, let's see. We had the re-release of the Flints. I like that a lot. Um, let me see what else. The Atlas shoes, of course. I got two pairs now, so I am legally bound to mention them <laughs> whenever I get a chance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And of course, there's a sleeper one that I wanted to mention: the Doraemon SB highs, the Kevin Perez uh, skate shoe that came out. Uh, uh, man, I love those shoes a lot. Uh, very underrated, as far as like one of the shoes that rolled out in 2020. Don't really know how people missed the boat on those, but really combined. They don't, they don't know the reference, Luke. I love I love the anime reference. I love the the SB high silhouette. It was a perfect mashing of the two. Luke, Luke, this is this is exactly why people missed out. Right. Lawrence, can you give us a synopsis of what Doraemon is? Doraemon is an anime uh, person figure. <laughs> he's like, not wrong. He's not wrong. It's like a, no, a Japanese cartoon character anime. Doraemon, <laughs> SB, Nike. It's, it's a mechanical cat that time travels, and he's got a pocket that's an infinite pocket. There you go. Fucking nailed it. <laughs> I nailed it, gentlemen. But, um... Well, no, no I, I think I no, no, it's not to cut you off, but I think uh, you know, that is a, I personally like that shoe, but it's things like that, 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 that I don't think it's gonna make the cut just because it doesn't check off a lot of the qualifications, right? I think we should kind of state like the qualifications that we're gonna use to review the shoe. That would make sense, right? Of course, yeah. So like hype is one. I know that kind of 
you know, conveys a lot, but just overall hype. I mean, like the story I think is there. So like you like the Doramons, but no one else even knows what that is. So it's like, we can't count that. No, it is an SB, but it doesn't hit that hype level. You know what I mean? Not. And then um, I guess the, how they did a resale. Is that something we should look at? I mean, I think that correlates with hype for the most part. But it's weird because like something like the Dior one sells for five times its value. And the, the value is already 2000 but I don't like that. I mean, that's in a whole different category. So that's what I'm saying. Like, do we care about that kind of thing? Cause if that's the case, then like, you know, that's gotta be up there. I think, I think we kind of got off the, the train tracks. Like we was, I was just asking like, what do you like? Like, like, and it has nothing to do. It don't even have anything to do with hype. None of that shit. It's just like, what'd you like? If he liked the door month and those were like some of your sneakers, like I was going to say, like, I don't really fuck with them, but at the same time I get it. Like, it doesn't have to do with like, how much are these reselling for? It's just more like, are like, what was your what shoes? Did you, what did you like? What What did you well, like? Yeah, so I, that was like my question. Like, what was? What do you like? Like, like Chris, what do you like this year? I liked. See, I I got lucky enough where I got most of the stuff that I liked. So like the fragment threes, the the guavas. Um, I mean, of course, but then everyone's gonna say like Chunky Ducky Strange Love. Like I mentioned Travis Dunks on another episode. As like, I think my pre pandemic. Um, yeah, those guys. Yeah, there's so many like good shoes this year. Uh, honestly, I would pick my number one as the Guava Fours, just because I, I know I've been kind of preaching these guys. But overall, like the unveiling, the like the story that went along, how they like we we all hated them, then we loved them, all that. That to yeah. me was like that was the shit. What about you, L? What were some of your favorite shoes? Lawrence is like holding back his laughter at me. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Um, um, let's see. It is uh, mm. my some of my favorite shoes of the year. <sighs> Strange Loves, Civilist, uh, Unions, both colorways are amazing. Off White Fives, both colorways. Uh, Kobe Grinches. Uh, and that's about it. That's about it. I mean, what I mean, what do we, who do we got to give the crown to one of them, though? You know what I mean? Yeah, we got to give the crown to to one of them. And I, Luke, since you since I started asking you first, what do you, what was your shoe of the year? Some one shoe of the year. Warren Lotus, baby. Toxic greens. <laughs> 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 Nothing's more toxic than Warren Lotus, baby. Listen, if you wanted to like go through a criteria of sneaker of the year, and you wanted to talk hype, you wanted to talk exclusivity, you wanted to talk about story, there's no shoe that had more of an impact on sneakers this year than I think the Warren Lotus fucking fake dunks. You know, th- you're not wrong. Listen, we were coming in every week talking about how this shoe, whether you loved him like me, whether you hated him like Lawrence, whether you were on the fence like Chris, cause he didn't want to make it. A, he didn't want to make a decision. Cause he thought maybe he might work with Warren one day, you know, <laughs> he's trying to play both sides. Politics fucking, Cheney over here. <laughs> Whatever you want to say, that shoe affected the industry in a major way. Yeah, but you, it's not a real shoe. So I don't know if you can count that. It's a it's bootleg. A phys- if I could buy the shoe, it's a real shoe. No, that's not. No, no. It, yeah, in reality, it's a physical shoe. Yes, yes, that you could buy, but it's not. It's not from a brand. That's what I'm saying. We need the qualifications here. It needs to be by a brand that is an actual sneaker brand, not a guy. Yeah. Okay. That's like, that's like if I went to the factory and was like, all right, make the most hype shoe ever. And then I was like, guys, here it is. You know, like, you can't do that. We could try. <laughs> no, I just wanted to mention, like, I just, I just did, like, all joking aside, I did want to mention it as, like, some sort of, like, technical. No, but that you, you raised a good point. I mean, he does check a lot of the boxes more so than some of the actual releases that came out. A lot. I just wanted to bring it up. I wanted it to be, I wanted to be fair. Not a lot of these foot sites, a lot of these, like, blogs do not give it any credit whatsoever they kind of wipe it from the history of like what's going on in sneakers as far as 2020 so i just wanted to mention it so that we all have it here so we're on record as being the only podcast that dares to even mention this shoe that being i mean no no other shoe got nike to sue the guy exactly Uh, you know uh and i'm if we're all you know all joking aside chunky donkey best best shoe this year fucking crazy rollout uh crazy design uh, unique colorways. It was it, 
eye catching and uh, and uh, great. And I couldn't get a pair, and I'll be salty about it forever. You know what's interesting is we've only mentioned basically Jordans and Warren Lotus. What do you mean? As far as the shoes we've talked about, I mean like Jordan, Nike, and Warren Lotus. We haven't mentioned an Adidas. We haven't mentioned a. Re- There's like no we other. Nothing even com- the even ALD close. 550s. You know, I mean, listen, they're a good shoe, but they're not sneaker of the year. So chunky donkey end of uh, period for me. What do you think, Al? Uh, my shoe of the year. <sighs> Damn, it's it comes down to me to two sneakers, but I'm going to it's either. All, and they're both pre pandemic sneakers, the off white mm-hmm. fives. And the black ones, the black ones, and the Travis Scott SBs. Damn. And I love both. I'm going to give the edge, and I'm going to say only because Virgil's already had a shoe of the year, and I didn't give Trav the shoe of the year last year for the off for the Trav ones. I'm going to say the Trav SBs were the shoe of the year. And I think and maybe in 10 years, we're going to look at those Travis SBs in the same grail like status that we look at, like a pair of Tiffany's or, you know, like a like we're going to look back on those because those were as great as Strange Loves and Chunkies. And, I mean, and Chunkies and Civilis and the Grateful, the, the, the Bears. The Trav SBs, and, and I'm going to say Chunkies are going to have that a similar effect in years. I just feel like that was the shoe that Nike, they didn't roll it out on, on the app. You had to go to a skate shop. You had to, it was so fucking hard to get them. You had to be a skater to get them, basically. You know, you unless had- you had a bunch of money. Or, yeah, unless you had a bunch of money or you were able to get shit back to it or you just luckily won a raffle yeah but like for you know in in sbs you know we see many skate shops get their own sb we see you know music you know artists get the, you know and when i say like you know like uh we look at like uh what is it uh mf doom like they've had you know sbs but like a rapper and a rapper that is like uh one of the biggest acts currently in the game for him to have a SB and for it to fucking pop the way it popped, it was, it was insane. It's gonna be the Travis or the Strange Love that kind of gets that grail, but like the, they're so I think, with time they'll be very synonymous with each other because they both dropped very similar times, right? Both February. Both February. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's gonna be one of those two. I, Lawrence, I agree with you. I think the Trav name might carry it to that. Strange Loves are going to be right next to that going like, well, it's you know, that and then Strange Loves. What? See, I, it's so weird because as much as I, I feel like Strange Loves are a beautiful shoe, I feel like they're so polarizing to people because some people just can't get behind pink. Or, you the, or so, velvet. Yeah. So, and it, but what's crazy is because people clamor for the, the Ben and Jerry SBs. Yeah. So I, I, it's just interesting to me, man. It's, uh, I, I, I think the Trav, uh, and then for celebrities, I think obviously celebrities say all the Dior's, but for the average consumer, I think Trav's are just well done. See, this is the thing though. This is the thing that I don't like ignoring is that it, it on paper is the Dior want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. But it's like, this is like when you ask your friend, like, who's your favorite rapper? And then they go, Biggie, Pac. And it's like, we know that. All right, what do you, that's, you know, we're having the real juice conversation. But the real winner is the Dior ones. Because of not only, like, the it's Italian leather, the the Dior name with Jordan. But we all ignore that. Why, I mean, why do we, why are we all okay with ignoring that? Because f- fuck high-end sneakers. Like, fuck that <laughs> fucking, you know. That that glass ceiling that they put up. Mm-hmm. I'm not about that. Wait, so so wait, so just to review our picks is I'm gonna say Guava Four is Union. 
Um, you say Travis Dunks, and then what, what? What did you say again, Lou? I said Chunkies. Chunkies. I mean, yeah. Okay, I can see all of that. I can see all of it. The guavas, the guavas were nice, man. They were a nice shoe, but they I'm- just prevailed when they shouldn't have. That's part of what my reasoning is. Is because so they followed the sale force, the Virgil force. Yeah. So people were kind of already over fours. They had the hype four, right? And then Chris Gibbs from Union comes around and goes, all right, I'm going to give you two with this weird tongue. And everyone was like, dude, gross. Get the fuck out of here. And then won them over with just the how he released, how he showed the pictures, the storytelling of everything that went along. You know, the, the fact that, like, you know, all of a sudden there's, like, the tongue is up and we're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Mm. That whole thing, he, he just really made a solid shoot. If he didn't follow Virgil's four, I think that would have been way more revered. Yeah, I think because we just got a four by one of the top designers in the industry right now, it kind of got slept on a little bit at first and had to really work its way back up just because of the merit of the shoe. Hmm. I see it. I'm also noticing like, yeah, we we had the we had the the, the off white fours, the union fours, and then we had the fire red fours in the in the end of the year. We had like three quarter, uh, uh, like three thirds of like uh, the year are filled with uh, fire with uh, fours. I think mm. we're going to start. Yeah, we had the and there was the tech and the fire. Yes. Well, I thought those are. I thought they were said it was going to be the tech and then they turned it into the fire red. I don't remember. I mean, I'm just saying we're just talking about like fours in general, like the story of fours this year. It's around the anniversary, so I think these are maybe like trickled down from that. But yeah. like, yeah, mm. just the, they put a lot of focus on fours this year, and it's just crazy that like that shoe still did as well as it did after Virgil gave everybody the shoe that, you know, everyone supposedly wanted. A Virgil well, I mean, four. also, but you also had to realize that those Virgil 4s were technically a, a women's shoe. So I yeah. and I feel like, you know, that color, and I think it's a beautiful color, but I think everyone more so, the, the, the rumors were, it was, or are, or it may happen, it's supposed to be, there's supposed to be a black and red, uh, a black and cement version of the off white that was shown at the, the Chicago shit for the men, and then you had the yeah. sale colorway for the women. That was the, supposedly what it was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But I feel like the unions, and once again, I mean, I can remember when you know people were just like, you know, these are disgusting, and oh my god, this tongue and this is ruined. And then, like you said, you know, we and we joked about it. We said they did a 180 on them, you know, and and, yeah. and everyone, you know, then became they they then started loving the the unions. Uh, forget how they actually released it on their website. We talk about it every now and then about how they the bot protection was there. Yeah, the little animated story. Great. The t-shirts and like all of that were mm-hmm. great. It was just a very clean and easy rollout. As far as like a shoe that was accessible to everybody, I would say maybe the, the Union is the most, it was the most accessible that this year. Yeah, one, yeah, I think uh, we, and we talked about this before, Union and, and Concepts were, have, they provided two of the most uh, friendly experiences for, for Union, for uh, consumers. Yeah. Yeah. I, yo, even Concepts with the Tur Duncan, that was a great story. I think it yeah. just hit later in the year. If that hit peak, it's also timing of shit, too. That's another thing we consider. If that hit peak dunk shit, yeah. like during pandemic, if that was like April and those came oh. out, I mean, the timing wouldn't have made though, sense. Because it's a Thanksgiving, like because of the like the rollout and it was like a Thanksgiving shoe, if you put that yeah. in April, if you put it like a duck kind of thing in April, it just wouldn't have hit as hard. Yeah, as. it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But I, you know, concept, I think concept shoes are a little bit underrated for this year. I will agree with that because like, if you look at the resale for them right now, a, a plain box one is like 240 to 350 or something like that, which is honestly not that hard to get. And I think like, that's a shoe that kind of fell under the radar, uh, after release as well. But you also have to realize a lot of these, a lot of these, uh, these dunks, they, it's, there's such a there's a fatigue of SBs in terms of high resale, and then also you have to realize that there's also just the uh, the fact that you know it's pandemic and people you know dunks that SBs that were going for you know six hundred dollars in in June when they came out 
you know, people are realizing like, nah, like these are priced. These should be 300. These should be, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, yeah, you know, yeah. What, what I think one takeaway from this year also is that high end fashion is going to, I think within the next like two to three years, as some other brands catch up after seeing the trend of collaborating with like a strong sportswear company, um, is they're going to take over the space a little bit and they're going to price a lot of people out. I well, mean, we've had conversations. What? Go to think about that though, because we had the Adidas Prada collection come out and that was a yeah. huge fucking miss. Yeah, big miss. That was a big miss from that company. So you see Nike and Dior working together and it's like this big, huge success. But you also see Adidas and Prada working together and it's just a big miss. I, I don't know if these companies will want to take the leap sometime with these things sometimes. I think what the Prada miss, I think it has to do with two heritage brands t- taking their two iconic silhouettes. Uh, but the the Jordan one is going to outweigh the superstars any day. Like there's no shell toe that's going to outdo any Nike silhouette. I think generally speak any of their heritage ones. Mm-hmm. So I think that was just a product of like bad timing on both ends. You know what I mean? Like a Prada Adidas, I think has a lot of value, just not next to a Jordan one Dior. Also, can you guys even think of like a, a good Adidas shoe this year? Like one that like kind of surprised you? Well, I was surprised when they said they were going to redo the forums for skate. Uh, okay. That I was kind of like, oh, nice. All right, cool. But other than that, then yeah, I can't like other than just like good easy colorways, you know, yeah, like there wasn't there was not a lot of. The quantums were like a brick. They 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 bought they were robust. Um, I did like I personally like the Bape Adidas collab from this year, the the ZX Runners. I I enjoyed those a lot. Um, but other than that, I can't really think of anything that Adidas put out that was like. I mean, Adidas has just been, I guess, banking off of Yeezy and how like consistent that's been. Mm. And it really hasn't been anything from them. No, hell, can you think of one Adidas that was like banging this year? I can't think of one other than like just Yeezys, like in good colors. No, I can't. <laughs> Damn. See, it's crazy, but this is this is going to be. It's so interesting because like Adidas had a brick year. Yeah. But then ends up with like this one of the sickest rosters. Also, let's not forget Pharrell, like the Pharrell, uh, the human races, the NMDs were coming out this year as well. And all yeah, of those still sold out. So like Adidas is still doing its job, but it's just not wowing anybody. You know, they're still selling out. They're still doing well, but th- there hasn't been anything that's like caught anybody. I guess the dash greens I liked from from the Pharrells, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, just going back to the high end thing, though, you know, you brought up Adidas and the Prada thing. Um, I mean, yeah, they had a whole bad year. But I mean, like, I feel like this is just going to get infiltrated. I feel like everybody's like, I mean, we just had that uh, announcement for the uh, North Face Gucci. Right. Like, who is that really for? Because North Face is not even within our price range that we speak about. Right. So now you got a higher tier. Uh, well, I'll say they're a higher tier basic level, right? They're upper middle class. Yeah. I would consider us like a middle class sort of range. They're yeah. an upper middle class, right? But now you have, you know, fucking one percenters talking to upper middle class, which is only bringing that a little closer together. Yeah, it's it's blurring the lines as far as like, yeah, really, what what are the haves and what are the have nots? And, you know, the other thing, though, is, is they did a great job. It's very simple uh, branding flip, you know, just taking North Face Gucci and then having the color stripes on the T like that. I mean, yeah. that's that's a very simple but fucking clean execution. I really exciting. can't get much better than that. I'm very impressed with, yeah, with the logoing on the on the T-shirt. The T-shirt might be the biggest, like like the best item on here. Bro, look at these jackets. These jackets are insane. It really does take like the, it, you know what it does? It takes like the silhouettes and like the 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 nupsy like bubble look from the north face and then they just add this crazy gucci flair to them that's really all it is look at have that have you guys seen the meme of what a gucci model is no what's you that you take like you take like a collared shirt and then a vest and then you put another button up on top of that and then you put another vest on it then you put the jacket on and then you put a handkerchief on the guy's head and he's a and gucci you put model. sunglasses on him too right <laughs> Then, yeah. yeah it's so goofy but it's so true 
they're just layered up, long sleeves and all. Mustache like yours. Yeah, buddy. I'm waiting. Listen, Gucci. Like, you know what, Luke? Actually, you could be a Gucci model with that mustache, bro. I could be. Everybody was sh- – you, sh- you were shitting on it specifically at the beginning of the year. But after this pandemic fucking mustache grew out, Gucci, Gucci's going to be calling, bro. They're going to poach <laughs> me for the Gucci podcast. That's funny. <laughs> Gucci podcast. They're gonna be like, let's let's steal this from the lower class. <laughs> have me have me host it. Listen, I've already done one solo podcast. They know I can do it. They know I can do it. Which is free on the Patreon for anyone who wants to go check that out. Hundred percent free. Come listen to the, to your boy talk about Christmas sweaters. I find a Vegeta Goku dab one that made me laugh really hard. <laughs> And then there, I created this thing called the Ohio Clause, which I'm going to propose to these guys at some point on the show. Please do. Uh, but Lawrence, um, yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts, if any, on this Gucci North Face stuff? Because, I mean, like, just to go back to my point of, like, now, so the high-end brands are not, com- like, trying to collaborate with our brands, brands that we sort of love and appreciate and have owned our entire life. Mm-hmm. North Face, I feel like, is something you grow up and you go, I want a nice jacket. I'll buy a North Face. Now is Gu- Gucci's kind of pulling them up. I mean, is there any thoughts on that on your end? I mean, we see we see these collabs, you know, especially North Face. They, I mean, they collab all the time. I mean, granted, I don't. it's rare that you don't see them with a Gucci. But um, I it's weird because I'm not really I, I haven't been in the North Face since I was a kid. We used to wear North Face, you know, jackets growing up in New York as a kid all the time you know that was our thing um i i just can't get behind the collab i don't like i, I guess i don't I, there's certain some of the 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 jackets and I, i'm sure you know those the price range for those jackets are gonna or coats are gonna be a little more expensive than i you know obviously than i would want to pay but um i like i said i wouldn't rock any of that shit like i just wouldn't I feel that. Yeah. I mean, except like those clean ass coats. I can't do any of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind when I become a model for them. <laughs> I- I'll know. What Wait, you, you, have, you have, Luke, you have to bless us, bro. Cause you have to give, you have to give Lawrence a chance to wear it around the house a little bit. Get used yeah. to it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Go to the bodega. See if anyone says anything. Oh, you know, they will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But like positive or negative, you know what I mean? Like if the guy's like, what are you doing, bro? It, I'm like, going to yeah, give nice him the loudest one. I'm going to give him the loudest one. <laughs> It's funny. And then I'm going to give you shorts. <laughs> I'm going to give you those those sh- those jean shorts that they had in one of the pictures. Um, I think we're actually getting close to wrapping up here, but I didn't want to um, not talk about the bodega dunks. I think we've we touched on them for a second, but they're coming out uh, this week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we got a little bit they, more information on them, right? Yeah, we got a friends and family version. Mm hmm. We also got we got a look at the we got a better look at the the varsity jacket here, yeah. which has two thousand was it two thousand two thousand eleven and twenty twenty are those all the years that Bodega has collabed with Nike? Is that what it is? Um, you know, I'm not sure if actually the story. Uh, the timeline kind of makes sense there. I know this is their first dunk. You know, just being a kid from Boston, like, and this being one of the premier boutiques, like, you know, I paid attention during those years, and I, I know this is their first dunk. I can't say that's like their first time collabing with Nike. Um, so, and I also didn't realize this was based off the Sandlot. Yeah, you had mentioned yeah, that earlier time on the podcast, but you're right. It is, it is a Sandlot shoe. I thought it was just like a baseball glove, but. Yeah, because when we were talking about it, we were taking it at very face value and going like, oh, this is like just, ba- I, I guess, like, yeah, we guessed it was a baseball glove, like we didn't really know. But the weird thing to me is like pro kids were the shoe that was like prominent in the Sandlot movie. So to do a dunk and base it off the Sandlot, I kind of lost me there a little bit. I mean, I still like the brown ones. Um, the friends and family one, that white pair is like cool, I guess. Yeah, let me see uh, if I can pull that up for you. Yeah. Friends and family shoes have had a weird history just because they're like the shoe that doesn't do well on the market. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they'll have like the pair they'll know that will like at least do with the numbers they want. And then the friends and family is like the weird pair that the brand wanted to do. And then like, could, like couldn't convince the, uh, whatever brand was making it for them. That way they will sell out. Yeah. All the friends and family ones have all, are always the weird colors. Like this I like, one's still I, clean, but I like these way better. These, these are much better. Those are so much better than the, actual... I like them better too. But if you look at, 
if you look at, say you're a buyer or some like whatever, you're in a position at uh, Nike where you have to you work with the brand and make sure one of the shoes sells out. Right. Mm-hmm. A white shoe looking all baseball-y like this, I don't know if that's going to make sure all of them get out the door. Because like, you guys don't even like the shoe in general, right? I mean, you like this one better, but... Yeah, so you're saying, I, I think I get what you're saying. You're saying conceptually the other shoe is better and the only reason we like this shoe better is because we have the other one to compare it to well there's i mean there's a couple things one like the general market is always going to like the darker color that's not going to get as dirtied up and other shit right yeah um this one i think just because of the materials and it's like not all the way a shoe that everyone would want Mm -hmm. like because you guys don't even like the original shoe right maybe you like this one more but you're also still not buying the shoe yeah, I'm not, I'm not yeah. big into that shoe. Yeah, exactly. So, like, these are the better shoe, but it's hard. This is the harder one to sell because it's a white suede. So that's when by maybe Nike. I know. I'm just assuming Nike was like, all right, let's bang out the brown one as the main one, and this be your friends and family. You get a certain amount of pairs, and you just give them out. Yeah. So what they're going to be doing is, uh, I believe, one out of every 25 pairs is going to be a, a, a free, a free upgrade to the friends and family pair, which is kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, that is cool. Yeah, uh, it's so, one every 20, I think. Let me see. Where does it say that? Uh, <clears throat> it says, yeah, one in every 20 pairs is going to be the friends and family edition. And it's going to include the the little sports card pack, which sports card collecting has gone gone, gone a little bit. We, we haven't really talked about it on this show. We've we've mentioned that like stock, the stock X CEO believe that that was the next big hype thing. But to see like a bodega Nike like baseball card kind of situation. Mm. I wonder what the resale value on just the cards is going to be. Like if you got to open up a pack of cards and like you could get like the Tiffany dunk or something like that. I wonder if that's going to have like some level of resale value too. Yeah. That's interesting. Huh? Yeah. Threw us a little I bit. I do of like the ball. They did better. A little bit of a curve yeah. ball. They did. <laughs> you stink. Just wanted to remind everybody this is my last episode. I'll be moving to the Gucci <laughs> next week. <laughs> well, I mean, I would I'm gonna watch what happens with that uh the resale of those white ones. Just because that's an interesting way to give out a friends and family. Yeah. I've never seen anything like that before. I mean, we've had options to upgrade more recently with like Warren Lotus. Um, but like a she roll out with that as one of the selling points. Yeah. It's interesting. I mean, we've already seen, like, I'm already looking at StockX right now, and I know it's not really a good indicator at this at the moment because they're not released, but they're already going for, like, two grand. Yeah, it's crazy. Which is crazy. And then the original pair in comparison is going for around five to six hundred. But, again, this is these are all pre-sale, so. And they will definitely come down. They're going to come down. Yeah. Um, I think we're about a time and before we get out of here. Is there anything you guys last final thoughts before we do hypo seat? Hmm. Nothing really for me. Uh, happy new year, everybody. That's a big one. Uh, if yeah, you happy new year, if you're listening to this on Monday, when it comes out, uh, good luck trying to get those bodega dunks. Go for it guys. Mm-hmm. Put in for Luke's size. <laughs> Put in for Lawrence's size. He didn't. No, he no, I don't want <laughs> I don't want them at all. You guys can have them. No, everybody just put in for Lawrence's size. It's just Christmas present. Like- it's his Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> no, imagine if the listeners gifted Lawrence 16 <laughs> pairs of bodega dunks. No, like, that would be so fire. That would be mad funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's hilarious. Lawrence, any final thoughts? Nah, just uh, be safe. Uh, you know, the next episode will actually uh, come out in the new year. So uh, I just want to thank everyone for uh, being with us in a, in a crazy 2020. Mm-hmm. And yeah, hopefully, you know, next year in 2021 is a lot better. So. Yes. All right. Hi, let's eat, guys. Let's do this and get out of here. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Chris, you want to go first? Mine, um, every time I'm home, I get a little nostalgic of the shoes that I have here. Uh, I put a bunch on Poshmark. I went through my whole thing. I shared my closet with uh, the Discord. So, you know, 
trying to do that thing I said I would do a couple of weeks ago. So a couple of shoes, I've already sold a couple, but I didn't know I had five pairs of the black D Brown pump Omni lights. Oh shit. So I'm going to, that's going to be my hypo seat is the D Brown <clears throat> pump Omni lights, which is what D Brown wore. Uh, one of the all time great Celtics won the, <laughs> won the dunk contest doing the no look dunk. I think 91. Yep. D Brown pump Omni light, baby. That's my, that's my shoe. That's that, that is a shoe. <laughs> I didn't know I had five pairs. I have five. Damn. That's wild. Lawrence, what do you got? Uh, Air Max one, mm -hmm. uh, the OG, the red colorway. Yes. Classic, Basic, okay. classic, classic, color. classic. Can't mm -hmm. go wrong. Can't go wrong. I'm going to have, I'm going to pick a shoe. I already picked the 327, the new balances when they first came out, but I wanted to pick the ones from the primary pack, which just released recently. Uh, those aren't, those are still available pretty much everywhere. Uh, I believe they're just yellow, blue, and red. Very classic colors, very easy to get shoe. Um, I'm, I, I don't know, maybe 2021, my New Year's resolution is to become a New Balance boy. I think it'll work out. Wow. Wow. You're going to bail on Ewing, start wearing Gucci and New Balance? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when, when I have my own podcast and I've changed my entire <laughs> identity, this will be a distant memory. The Love dunk, it. the Ewings, it'll be all gone. <laughs> And with that, ladies and gentlemen, you can follow us all on social media. I'm at not that Cheney, C H E N E Y on all social platforms. You can follow Lawrence, L Z D three two five. Those hot takes you've always wanted to see. Uh, you got Trevisus in the corner. You got Meanie with a three, I believe, our producer. And uh, yeah, like Lawrence said, this is the last one of 2020. So we appreciate you guys having this crazy year with us. Uh, we got three years coming up in the, uh, February, which is a crazy thought to realize. Um, and you know that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Peace. I'll talk to you next week. Later. Next year. Peace. Next year. Next year. <laughs>